Okay, so I think most people would agree F equals M times A. Mass times acceleration equals force. In order for there to be a force, there must be mass times acceleration. And nothing moves without force, which again is mass times acceleration. I think most people would agree with that. A few problems I have. Number one, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, and this is gravity. What is that? That's mass times acceleration. So he's saying gravity is a force, mass times acceleration. Einstein says gravity is not a force. Therefore, Einstein is saying gravity is not mass times acceleration. Gravity is not a force, not mass times acceleration. Okay, next problem I have. This is a man. He has a dart. The dart has mass. He throws the dart. The dart now has mass and acceleration, so therefore there's a force. The dart hits the dartboard. It stops. One of Newton's laws says an object will remain in motion unless acted upon by a force. So an object will remain in motion unless acted upon by a force. That must mean that there's a force here. In order for there to be a force, there must be mass times acceleration. There's no mass times acceleration here. There's mass here, but there's no acceleration here. Therefore, there's no force here. But, Einstein, uh, but Newton's law says an object will remain in motion unless acted upon by a force. Well, this didn't remain in motion, and there can't be a force, because if f equals m times a, there's no acceleration here. Therefore, there's no force here. And it did not remain in motion. Okay, now people say density is not a vector, so obviously I'm going to try and prove that it is a vector. So, I came across videos which are showing me like the change in position, velocity, acceleration. And I came across one video which says that displacement is a vector. So displacement is the position final minus the position initial. Or the change in position, which is the position final minus the position initial. So obviously I did Riley's experiment. And obviously the position final would be here, minus position initial, which would be down here. That is your vector, that is your your displacement, and displacement is a vector. We know that we're changing the density, we changed it from here to here. Therefore it has a vector because the position changed, there was a change in position, so there's a vector. By changing the density there is a vector because it moved. Okay, so if we wanted to calculate the change in position, we could do the position final minus the position initial, which again is just the same as displacement, which is a vector. Uh, if you wanted to find the velocity, we could do the change in position divided by the change in time, and that would give you meters per second. If we wanted to find the acceleration, we could do the change in velocity divided by the change in time, and that would give you meters per second squared, so that would give you an acceleration. So obviously I did Riley's experiment, as I says, worked out all the masses, took away the container mass, did the volumes, found out all the volumes and things, I did it all up, and uh, did what I needed to do. Then I used density equals mass divided by volume, found the density. Obviously I found out that the egg was more dense than the water, but less dense than the salt water, so that's why it sank in water, but rose in um, salt water. Uh, because of the density of the medium change. So then I came up with the equation again for another vector. If, so, the density of the medium minus the density of the object. If it's a negative number, it will fall. If it's a positive number, it will rise. So again, this gives you your vector because it tells you whether it will rise or fall. Um, as well as the displacement, which 100% is a vector. Uh, 9.81 meters per second squared. I believe that could be a constant in a vacuum. Possible factors that interfere with this rate. Surface area, obviously for any resistance, example air resistance, pressure, volume and medium, I believe these could all be factors that interfere with the rate of fall. I believe the 9.81 meters per second squared is constant, like the over 26 constants that there is. I believe that doesn't change. So, any evidence of the 9.81 meters per second squared rate, obviously I've not seen no visual video evidence of this, if anybody has that, that would be great. Because I haven't actually seen this be calculated, like with video evidence that actually shows the rate of fall. Um, showing things falling and calculating. Any evidence this rate decreases with altitude? Somebody did send me a video showing weight decreasing with altitude. There's a few problems with that video. I'll have to do a video on that to show you what I mean. Because that kind of debunks what they say. Uh, but yeah. Thank you for listening. Take care.